right, hello YouTube, this is Tracer83. One year. That's how long I've been shooting the pistol that I'm going to review today. One year since I bought the SIG P320, almost exactly. Now you might say, hold on, you've been doing this for a while, you've had this little channel of yours for like 9, 10, 11 months, something like that, and you're just now doing a review, and to top it off, you're going to do the P320. Well, you know everybody on the internet has already talked about that pistol, right? Yeah, I'm aware of that. But there are a few reasons I'm still excited to do this, nonetheless. First, I've shot the crud out of this pistol since I bought it a year ago. Second, I'm going to talk about not one, but two P320s that I own. One a compact and one a full size, both in 9mm. Thirdly, and uh, this is where I think this review will differ from a lot of the others, I'm going to focus... Uh, a lot on their use in competition and how they stack up as competition pistols. Yeah, I am gonna talk about the basic stuff, uh, the features, their ergonomics, how they shoot, all that sort of stuff, especially for those few people that might be tuning into this video before seeing any of the others out there. Uh, but I'm gonna focus on how they have served me in both USPSA and IDPA uh, and also in multi-gun the few matches that we have around here. And lastly, and this is what's kind of exciting for me, I just got uh, a Christmas present to myself in the mail, and that's these two small grip frame mod modules for both the compact and the full size. And I've been looking around for these for quite a while now. And for the longest time, the only thing you could find were replacement grip modules for sort of the standard sizes. So you could get a replacement compact size module, but you could only get it in the medium, which is what it usually comes with. Uh, same thing for the full size, it comes with a medium. I have since seen uh, pistols available in gun shops that come with different, uh, different grip sizes, but up until recently, uh, this is the way it's kind of been. You get one grip with one pistol. Anyway, I'll get to the grip modules here in a few minutes. So here we go. Full disclosure, the SIG P320 is the only SIG that I have owned. And not only that, it's the only SIG that I've ever shot. And I don't know if that helps me or hurts me as a reviewer. It, I probably, it probably does give me a little more unique perspective or at least a different perspective. I've always kind of admired SIGs. I've always heard that they were high quality guns and they were very, they've always been attractive to me. And uh, so I went to my local gun shop again about a year ago and said, you know what, if they've got a SIG that I like, I'm going to buy a SIG. And uh, I mentioned in my introductory video that I'm not really a... Uh, I'm not a collector in the sense that I try to buy, you know, one of everything that I just have to have one of those, one of those, one of those. But I mean, I do believe in having different pistols for different purposes. And, uh, you know, I figured if I really like the SIG uh, and it fills a certain niche for me, then I can just turn one of my other pistols. That's, you know, not a big deal. So anyway, I went in there and this was right when the P320 had just come out. I mean, it was brand new. And all I knew was that SIG had come out with a polymer framed pistol, which I, what I was thinking of was the 250. So I went in there and I, I saw the 320 sitting there and I said, hey, you know, can I check it out? And to my surprise, it was striker fired. And according to the guy behind the counter, it was all the new hotness. So, you know, I tried the trigger because, you know, in this shop, they, uh, you know, they have some sense about them and they let their customers try their triggers within reason. And so I tried the trigger. Uh, I checked out the functions on it, the ergonomics, how it fit in my hand, and I really liked it. So I decided, you know what, this is going to be my SIG or this is going to be the first SIG that I own. And what it turned into was my SSP gun for IDPA. So that's stock service pistol no real modifications made to it. So I started shooting the compact in both SSP and in production 
for USPSA, which you don't see a whole lot of compact pistols being shot in USPSA, uh, at least among the more experienced shooters. Uh, it's more the guys who come out and, you know, they just want to have a good time and perhaps they're just getting into it. Well, I found that I was shooting it really well and I got really used to it. Uh, I, it, I just, it really fit me, I felt. So I decided, you know what? I like it enough to go out and buy a second one. And you might say, okay, hold on. The P320 is modular. You can just take out the fire control group and put it in a new frame and put a new slide on it, all that, and you've got a new gun. So why'd you go out and buy a second one? Well, originally I thought about just getting another, basically a conversion kit for nine millimeter minus the uh, control group, and then have that worked on by a gunsmith and souped up to be a competition gun. Well, I decided that I didn't want my gun gone that long, so I just decided to buy another one. And I kind of rationalized, rationalized it by saying, well, I'll keep my compact, which is my carry piece anyway. I'll keep it with a stock trigger, stock controls, everything. It came with night sights, which is nice, especially for normal applications. I won't mess with it, and then I'll have the full-size one be my competition gun, and I'll just rework the whole thing. So now I'll go into some of the basic features of the pistol and what I think of them. Again, you know, I'm sure some guys are gonna come to this channel and maybe they've never seen any reviews, read any articles or anything on the pistol. So I'll just briefly go over the features. First off, in SIG fashion, the slide is a little bit higher to the center of the frame than a lot of other pistols. That's just the way SIGs are and people who buy SIGs come to learn to accept them. I've never had any issue with it. Um, it feels different than my other pistols, but I've had no issue with recoil control or anything like that. It's just something that you have to make an adjustment to, in my opinion. Also, the top of the slide is built in such a way that it's tapered not only, not only upward, but as you go back. And that's, that's, partly, that's partly a, uh, a functionality thing. It's to get the weight down to where it's supposed to be in order for it to function. But it's done in such a way that is not only aesthetically pleasing, but I think it also helps uh, getting the pistol in and out of holsters and that sort of thing. At least that's been my experience. It also tapers off towards the front, as you can see here, in kind of a, a diamond-shaped cut. That's really neat. The sights are pretty good. Both of mine came with uh, Sig Light night sights, which a lot of them do. I've only really seen a couple in my local shops, and I've been to several that come with uh, just regular white dotted sights. What I like about these sights, not only are they dovetailed, not only are they easy to see, well, especially in the dark, but the rear sight is a little bit, is a little bit bulkier, both uh, going forward and uh, vertically. And that's good for if you're one of these guys who wants to be able to rack your slide off of your belt or something, if you're in a pinch and, you know, uh, lose the use of one of your arms. So that's something. It's not a huge thing, but it's something. So I know it sounds counter Line is clear. intuitive and, and doesn't make sense, but you got to relax. You're, try, you're trying, you're, I think you're trying too hard and you got to relax a little bit. The barrel also has some nice cuts to it, which again is a weight reduction thing and makes it pretty stylish. Moving down the frame, we come to two sets of controls. There's the slide release and the takedown lever. The takedown lever works really well as kind of a gas pedal almost for your non-dominant thumb to help control recoil. Also, I really like the uh, slide release uh, in terms of how accessible it is and uh, how easy it is to operate. The problem I have and that a lot of other people have had is that it's in such a spot, uh, if you're a 1911 guy, it's right where your thumbs are gonna be resting most of the time. 
and I've had plenty of matches in which I should have gone to slide lock, especially in IDPA where that's a preferred thing, gone to slide lock and uh, well, it didn't lock back. So I shot my last round, bang, no lock back and then click. I have overcome that since I've just trained myself to uh, be a little bit looser with my support thumb and let it hang in space a little bit more, which has actually kind of helped me to not tense up so much in my dominant hand and to put more focus on my support hand when I'm shooting. The last thing I'll say about the slide release before moving on is that um, I recently went back to the PX where I bought this and there was a, uh, there was a flat dark earth model, one that had a flat dark earth grip and a uh, burnt bronze slide, which, you know, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's really cool. You know, it looks really neat. I wish that would have been around um, when I bought this one. But I said, eh, okay, whatever. But then I looked at it closer and the slide release is a new design. I don't know if that's the way they're all coming now or if this was a special edition or what, but the slide release, instead of being kind of chunky and facing backward towards your thumb, was a little bit thinner and it pointed forward. So it went in the same groove in the frame, but faced forward, meaning that you had to make, you know, a little bit of extra effort, more of a deliberate effort to hit it, which, you know, I think a lot of people are gonna welcome that change because it's it's still gonna make it perfectly accessible, I think, but uh, make it harder to cause an unintentional uh, failed slide lock or a slide going forward when it shouldn't go forward. Moving on after that, the, uh, the magazine release, it's a small thing to point out, but uh, I really like it in terms of not just its, its accessibility, but uh, its design. It's kind of in a triangular design, which is a little unique. And it's in a really good spot. It's not obstructed. It doesn't, it doesn't run back into the side of the frame. It doesn't terminate in the frame. It still sticks out. And the, uh, the Gen 4 Glocks, like this one here, for example, it, it basically runs right back into the slide. Now on this pistol, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt anything. In fact, this is light years ahead of the, the previous generation's mag releases, in my opinion, again. I know that's probably gonna offend some people. Moving down the frame itself, you'll notice that I put some very aggressive stippling on both of these frames. And that's because uh, even though the, uh, the stock frames come with some pretty nice texturing, uh, there's no texturing up here where your thumbs or the, the heels of your hands rather are going to go. And it's not as aggressive as I'd like. Up until recently, I was using Talon grips on all my pistols. Talon grips are great. I really like them. Uh, you know, I'm not too proud to admit I picked them up or I picked the idea up from Hickok45 because he talks about them all the time. He's got them on all of his pistols. So I went out and ordered some, and I've been through two sets on each of these three pistols. Well, actually, only one on a full size because right after I took them off is when I stippled both of these. But anyway, the issue I have with the Talon Grips, which I like the sandpaper texture, is they just, they will not stay on to uh, very heavy use. And by that, I mean you're, you're dry firing a lot, you're running around in stages, manipulating the pistol a lot. They'll start to, to slide off. The adhesive comes off and that, that gives you issues with your grip. And I eventually, like on the last set I had on here, this, this kind of piece right here, it was, it was moving around. So I just cut it off. I started to have the same issues with both of these. So finally I said, all right, you know, if it, if they come up with a new adhesive or something that's gonna work out better than great, but I'm just gonna go out buy a soldering iron and uh, experiment with stippling. And I, I think I did a pretty good job on these. Which on these, it isn't really gonna matter a whole lot anyway, because I'm going to replace the frames. Here's the small grip frame added to the compact pistol. 
And the first thing I noticed when I installed it was that in addition to the circumference of the grip being a little bit smaller, the tang area is a good amount deeper, which is making it a lot easier for me to get to the magazine release. Also, you'll notice this is in flat dark earth. Yeah, it looks kind of neat, but I wasn't trying to be tactical when I bought it. This was the only color I could find on SIG's website now that the uh, small frames and the different size frames seem to be more available. And the same is true with the full size, which I got in this kind of OD green color. Now, even though I showed you these grips in their original packaging, I have already been out shooting with them. And something I noticed is that Though I am able to get to the controls easier with the smaller grips, I'm having to make some adjustments because uh, it's really just a completely different feel for me. The tang is deeper, like I already mentioned, and uh, with sort of a narrower frame, it's causing me to, when I draw, index the sights kind of off in one direction or the other, and that's just something that's going to get fixed with practice, I think. But overall, I like these a lot. So that's the compact with the small frame. Incidentally, I do plan on stippling both of these new sets of grips once I'm done with this video. I went ahead and put the original grip back on the full size. That way I could show you how swapping it out works. And I could also talk about the fire control unit. The P320 is built around a chassis, which is what makes it a modular system. And the way this works is you take down the pistol just like you would any other striker fired gun. The difference is the takedown lever slides out with a twist. From there, you can get your finger up under the fire control unit and the whole thing pops out. This is the serial numbered item of the weapon. This essentially is the gun. And the idea behind this or the purpose for this is that you can change calibers by working around the chassis. In other words, you can buy a conversion kit, which includes a new grip, a new slide barrel and recoil spring and drop this back into that. And you have a new pistol and a new caliber. Some say it's a little gimmicky to an extent, I agree, but the big reason for that is the conversion kits that you can buy are, I think, at the time of this video, $399 on SIG's website. You can probably you can probably get them for a little bit cheaper in other places, but that's almost the cost of a new gun, especially considering that the conversion kits come with one magazine in that caliber, whereas if you buy the gun uh, by itself or pre-assembled, I guess. It comes with two magazines. Anyway, this is still handy. Nonetheless, it uh, does give you the ability to swap out these grip frames. And the grip frames are bare bones, as you can see. They're very light. I think they cost about $45. Again, that's on SIG's website. There are no metal components except for the little spring that, that uh, actuates the mag release. Dropping the fire control unit back in requires that you just you put the back in first and then rock it back into place. You have to pull the trigger a little bit to get it back in the trigger well. And then the only kind of tricky part, at least for me trying to do this sideways on camera, is you put the takedown lever back in. There we go. And then rotate it back into position. And there you go. Okay, we're now back to going hot. You're already loaded. Yeah. You ready? Ready. Stand by. So what do I think about the P320 overall? Well, obviously I like it a lot and I'm going to keep on shooting it. 
I will talk about a few of the particulars, however. I'll start with conceal carry. I do conceal carry the P320 Compact uh, fairly regularly. I sometimes still conceal a Glock 19 depending on what I'm wearing and that sort of thing. The, the Compact 320 is a little bit bulkier than the Glock 19. It's a little bit thicker, but that doesn't bother me. I'm not one of these guys who's going to not carry a pistol if it doesn't exactly match the profile of a Glock 19 or something similar. I've had no problems concealing this. Um, most of my experience has been with outside the waistband carry. I have tried a few times inside the waistband and it's been a little bit more difficult mostly because the holsters that I've used with it are just generic holsters that'll fit most pistols in this size. I've got a I've got an acquaintance who makes Kydex holsters and I think I'm going to ask him to make me a inside the waistband Kydex holster for the, the 320. The P320 does come with a, uh, a Kydex holster of its own. A lot of guys in their reviews when they bring this up they're like oh yeah that thing you need to get rid of that as, as soon as you can. Well I used this to conceal and in competition for the first several months that I had it. And it's really not a bad holster. It's just really simple. It's comparable to something you get by Phobos or something like that, I think. You can't really adjust it in terms of uh, the angle or anything like that. It's all just kind of solid, mold, uh, solid molded with a 45 degree cant. That's basically how I carry it anyway when I'm carrying it at the three o'clock position. It also has a set screw for retention, which I'm able to get just the right amount of retention for me with this. I do have a couple of, uh, of CompTAC International holsters that I use for the compact and for the full size. They're bright red as you saw in my videos. Um, I, I'll use those in carry once in a while when I know it's gonna be under something like a coat that I'm not gonna be taking off when uh, such a flashy color is not going to really matter. A feature that I like both for self-defense purposes and for competition is the gun has pretty good magazine ejection. The gun's not going to fling the magazine across the room, but it, it does allow it to free fall with some force behind it. Another thing is when inserting the magazine, it goes in really smoothly, and that's largely because it's a metallic magazine uh, against a polymer frame. And another thing is the, uh, the grip frames have a cutout at the bottom here, allowing you to get a purchase on the magazine if by chance you have to strip it. I've only had to do that once or twice. I think there was a match when I had dried sunblock on my magazine and it, it was sticking in there but that made it really easy and real quick to deal with. That's in contrast to something like a Glock that has polymer magazines inside a polymer frame. And I like Glocks just fine, but there was a stage on a separate match when I was shooting my Glock 19 and the magazine didn't eject, which, you know, that was a problem in and of itself. But the issue I had is it was cold out and I was wearing a thin pair of gloves and I just, I could not get a hold of the magazine to save my life, which cost me several seconds. The last thing I'll say about the pistol as a personal defense pistol, it does not have any external safeties. I'm personally okay with that. I carry it with a round in the chamber pretty regularly, and I just make sure that I have a holster that has uh, good coverage of the trigger area, which that's really what's important. There are models that they're either in the works or they're already out. They're law enforcement models that have external safeties for agencies that require that. I haven't personally seen any. Besides having an internal hammer block, like uh, just about every other modern semi-automatic pistol, it does have an additional safety feature of uh, not letting you take the pistol apart with a magazine in the gun. So. With a magazine in, I can't rotate the takedown lever. Um, that's fine, I guess. It doesn't hurt anything, but uh, I'm of the opinion that you should not attempt to take your pistol apart with a magazine in the gun anyway. 
Let's talk about accuracy for a second. I believe pretty firmly that when dealing with handguns, accuracy has a lot more to do with the shooter than it does the gun itself. Granted, when shooting at 25 and 50 meters, bench resting your pistol, you probably will see small differences between this pistol and that. That's the mechanical inherent accuracy of that gun. But in practice, I, I don't notice any difference between uh, my P320s and other polymer frame guns that I own, or even uh, steel frame ones for that matter. For example, this is a group I shot at seven yards yesterday. This is one at 15, and this is one at 25. This was all standing in a firm isosceles position, offhanded, shooting just kind of at a leisurely pace. Not terribly fast, not terribly slowly. The results, I think, are more than adequate for my purposes. I like shooting groups sometimes uh, just for uh, practice sake, but it's not what I spend most of my time doing. And these results, again, are comparable to what I've gotten from all my other pistols. Also, the trigger pull on both of these is about six and a half to seven pounds. That's what a lot of people have been, have been reporting. I don't have a trigger pull gauge, but that feels about right. If I had a three and a half pound trigger, if I had a trigger job done or, or something like that, I'm sure those groups would shrink a little bit. In general terms, the triggers on the P320s are really good. They're often compared to the Walther PPQ or contrasted against the Walther PPQ, depending on how you look at it. The Walthers are often said to have the best striker fired trigger, and I think that's probably accurate. I've tried them a couple times, but the triggers on these guys are excellent as well. Not super light, as I said, but they just they feel very good there is a little bit of stacking uh my full size has a little bit of crunchiness but i think that'll reduce after it's been broken in more than it is concerning reliability i wish i could further perpetuate the myth of the never malfunctioning pistol however i can't do that with either of these i have had malfunctions with both granted i have shot i don't know how many thousands of rounds through both of these now the single most common problem I've had is a failure to extract. So the, uh, the extractor strips the round out of the chamber partially and the next round gets jammed up underneath it. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's causing this. I detailed stripped both of these yesterday and my extractors do, uh, do look a little bit worn. They've got some wear and tear on them. I looked at, uh, I checked out the SIG forums and a couple people brought up issues with their extractors and had to have them replaced by the factory. I didn't have an issue with either of these when I first bought them, but increasingly as I've put more and more rounds through, through them, I've had, uh, I've had this issue. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, tweaking with my, my reloads. Also, um, just pay really close attention to to what malfunctions I'm getting and taking good notes on those. Yesterday I shot a little over 200 rounds with uh, with the full sized and I had four failures to extract and that was with different magazines, different brass, and two different powder loadings. So I don't know that it's the ammunition but I'm not going to completely rule it out yet. I don't think I'm limp wristing because uh, this happened once while I was shooting groups, actually twice while I was shooting groups yesterday, and I was making a real point to keep my my wrist locked over center and uh, keep a good grip on the pistol. So more to follow on that. Lastly, I'll talk about modifications and available aftermarket parts for the pistol. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when I bought the pistol, it had just hit the market. It was Pretty, it was pretty new and there wasn't a whole lot available for it. But since then, in the last year, a lot of stuff has popped up. And you can now go to places like Springer Precision or Dawson Precision and get aftermarket sights. 
magazine releases, uh, extended base pads for competition, magwells, and uh, 1911 style guide rods and guide springs, or recoil springs, excuse me. And as it turns out, I just received a couple of these items in the mail. So this is going to turn into kind of a box opening. Let's see what we got. I forgot what I ordered, to be honest. All kinds of goodies. I did go ahead and get a 1911 style guide rod, which will allow me to put one of these uh, one of these springs on and tune the pistol to uh, my different loads. My uh, one of my buddies has a uh, has a full size P320 that he sent to Bruce Gray who is the manager and coach for Team SIG, and he's also a well-renowned gunsmith uh, in SIG pistols. He's been doing it for, I think, 40 years now. And he has, a, uh, he has an aftermarket guide rod and spring, and I just, I really liked the feel of his pistol. I liked the recoil impulse of it, so I went ahead and bought a similar setup. So I'm going to put that in and see how it works out, and also see if that changes uh, anything with its reliability. See if maybe this issue that I'm having off and on, maybe it goes away, I don't know. So in addition, I got, and I got all of this from Springer Precision's website. One of the items is a Dawson Precision set of uh, fiber optic sights. And I have fiber optic sights on one of my competition guns on my full size MMP in 45. And uh, I've kind of put off uh, getting sights for the SIGs, partly because I planned originally to sign, uh, send my pistol off to get worked on and have those installed. Well, I decided I'm going to pay this big fee to have a gunsmith put the sights on when that's something that I can do myself. And then lastly, I bought this uh, extended magazine release, which like I said, now that I've got these these new grip modules, I can get to the, uh, I can throw them on the floor is what I can do. I can get to the magazines pretty easily now. But this is production legal from what I understand, and it's ESP legal in IDPA, so I'm going to give it a try and see if that, uh, you know, gives me a little bit more of an advantage even. So stay tuned, stick around, and uh, I'll let you see what the pistols look like, or my full size, rather what it looks like once I've uh, sort of souped it up. Oh, and this is just kind of a, an aside. SHOT Show 2016 is going on right now, and they've just unveiled a new SIG, a new P320, and it's a competition model, which people have been kind of talking about for a while. And from what I can tell, it includes all of these upgrades that I'm planning on doing to mine, plus a few. It's got fiber optic sights. It's got a completely different grip module in terms of its, its size and shape. It has a flat face trigger, which weighs in at, I think, three and a half to four pounds and uh, a few other things. So I'm excited. I'm still gonna soup up my pistol for competition, but I fully expect that once the, the P320 competition series is available, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rush and go get it myself. All right, guys, so there it is. My thoughts and impressions on the SIG P320 compact and full size in nine millimeter. They've both kind of become my go-to pistols on and off the range. I really enjoy shooting them and plan to do so a lot in the future. It's no surprise in my mind that they've become so popular and that there's a new competition model coming out. As always, if you got any comments, critiques, uh, questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe, like and share with your friends, and until next time, keep your eye on that front side.